Okay, Mr. Sonnenberg here. Um, again, this is Science 9, uh, the unit matter and chemical change. Uh, we are talking today about general outcome number one. Uh, we're classifying substances based on their properties and uh, composition. So today we're going to talk about specific outcome 1.1. We're going to investigate and describe properties of materials. Now, we talked in our last screencast about physical properties, and today what we're going to talk about are chemical properties. So chemical properties uh, describe how one substance interacts with another. So we're, we're talking about how substances can interact with water, how they interact with oxygen, how they interact with other pure substances, and we're going to discuss uh, signs and uh, indicators that can indicate that a chemical change is occurring based on the chemical properties that uh, that we see. So I have two pictures on the on the screen right now. One is a uh, a nail rusting, and the other is a penny changing color. And so we can identify chemical properties based on uh, these two examples, but there are more examples as well. But um, what are their chemical properties and how is the nail interacting with the air and the oxygen and how is the penny interacting with the solution that it's in. So chemical properties. So uh, they become evident when a change occurs. So we can, we can tell that uh, chemical properties or we can determine that a substance's chemical properties based on uh, its interaction and that a change is occurring when it interacts with specific substances. So an example of this is Alka-Seltzer. When it's dropped in a container of water, it will bubble or it will fizz. And you can see in the image that it's clearly fizzing and bubbling. So there are four main indicators of chemical change. And the first that we're going to discuss is there's a distinct color change. So if you look at the image, at one point the Statue of Liberty actually uh, was not that greeny blue color it is today. It, uh, it would have been a, a, a much different color. And then how the statue's structure and comp composition, how the components of it actually interacted with the air over time and the oxygen in the air, it uh, has changed its color. So it wasn't always that color though. Uh, the second main indicator of chemical change is that there's a release of energy, usually in the form of light or heat. Now, uh, to give a few examples of that, I'm sure we've all sat around a campfire at one time uh, in the spring or the summer, and or even around our house, maybe out in the woods, camping, a campsite. But that fire is actually a, there's a chemical change occurring, and the chemical property um, how we can talk about how the wood, how oxygen, uh, how they interact. And this interaction, it's giving off heat. So we know that a chemical change has occurred because uh, of how these two substances or materials are interacting with one another, another and giving off heat. Same thing with fireworks. Uh, you know, we... We, we've seen fireworks, you know, sometimes we see them around New Year's Eve or Canada Day. And we'll see um, firework shows. And these fireworks are actually, how are these uh, chemicals or how are these substances interacting? And so what it's doing is it's releasing energy in the form of light and, and heat. And that's how we get the uh, various colors of fireworks. Another, the, the third of the four main indicators of chemical change is, was there a formation of a gas or a solid precipitate? And so what is a precipitate? Well, it's a solid product formed in a chemical change. So in, in the image, it shows that there is a, it looks like a gooey solid clump. Once the, uh, the uh, dropper is putting the new substance in the other, so... How is it interacting while well, it's creating a solid precipitate, okay, when it interacts? So, and then the last indicator of chemical change is that there's a noticeable change in the smell. So sometimes when 
Uh, things combust, we can smell, and it's it's definitely different than it was when we first took each of the two substances. Uh, can you notice that smell? Well, if you can, then uh, sometimes then that can be an indicator that a chemical change has occurred. So let's just use uh, metallic magnesium and let's just as an example and then add it to an acidic solution. So when we take that metallic magnesium and we add it to this acid or the acidic solution, what's going to happen is there's going to be some bubbling that occurs and that is basically the formation of gas. And then also energy is going to be given off um, when this occurs and then it's going to be given off in the form of heat. So when we see those uh, those two things happening, the bubbling and, and the heat given off, then we can uh, determine that a chemical change has occurred. And basically, when we look at the chemical properties, they're telling us how did the metallic magnesium interact with the acid solution. So different than what we talked about in the last screencast with physical properties, how we can view them through senses and we can discuss the quantitative and qualitative principles. Uh, now we're talking chemical properties and what is the interaction between uh, two substances. And again, uh, this example uh, clearly illustrates that the metallic magnesium interacted with the acidic solution because it did bubble and it gave off heat. And that uh, concludes our screencast. Hope you learned something about chemical change and chemical properties. And we look forward to seeing you in the next cast.